words of power because we are kings and our words matter. God wants to give you the Holy Spirit. He's more than eager to give you the Holy Spirit. He has made you righteous and qualified you to receive the Holy Spirit. He has done all the work. You see, you simply believe he wants to give you, you'll receive it. That's all. Pastor Sam Chaladurai invites you to the special Christmas and New Year services of AFT Chennai. The service will be held at the Jesus Calls campus in Vanagaram, Chennai. Our Christmas service is on December 25th at 6 a.m. and our New Year service is on December 31st at 10 p.m. Messages will be in English with translation in Tamil. Everyone is welcome. We hope to see you there. We are always tempted to go to God on the basis of our works. God, I prayed for so long. Therefore, please bless me. God, I read my Bible every day for a month. Therefore, please 
bless me god i i've gone to church every sunday for the last one year without fail therefore please bless me god i've given so much offering therefore on the basis of that please bless me god i've done so much volunteer work for the church on the basis of that please bless me god i've helped the poor so much so many people who've come to me in my times of need i've helped them therefore please god i've been obedient to my parents therefore bless me now that's how we are often tempted to go and that sounds like a very good way right and that way is in fact taught in scripture itself it scripture itself says if you follow my commandments if you do my commandments you can get blessing okay very clearly it says in the scripture but the problem is it says you have to follow all the commandments right not just one or two that you like right and it says you have to follow them always i didn't read this but you can go read it on your own deuteronomy 11 verse 1 it says you have to do it always all the time and there are many more references that's just one example and also it says you have to do it perfectly right perfectly so you have to do it do all the commandments you have to i'm talking about the old you know commandments in the bible right you can take the whole bible new old testament new testament everything right you have to do it all all of them you have to do it always and you have to do it perfectly right and nobody can do commandments like this if you if you say you know my blessing is based on me going to church every sunday right one day will come you may not be able to go to church okay and what happens to your blessing then you see god knows we cannot keep up our end of the you know for some some reason maybe it's not even your fault maybe they cancel the church service yeah last week some i heard some church services were canceled you know so anyway what i'm trying to say is if you bank on anything that you do to receive blessing if you say okay as long as i'm doing this and as long as i'm not sinning blessing will continue to come one day will come when you will sin okay at least one day will come when i will maybe you maybe that day won't come for you but but anyway let's just take me for the example right one day will come when i sin and what happens to my blessing then see god has not left me to go in this way where my blessing will be hindered you see plus if i go in this way he never gets any glory plus he never said do the commandments i will bless you so that you will go really and do it and get blessed right why did he say it he said it so that you will realize very quickly oh my god i can't do this i can't do all of them i can't do it all the time i can't you know do it perfectly god please help me is there another way for blessing and then god will say come there is another way you see some people think you know then why did god say come like this you know why did god pretend as though there is a way well you see if he directly offers us jesus we want to appreciate jesus <laughs> only if we go and struggle with the law and come to our senses oh my goodness i'm not able to do this then only when we come to jesus we'll think of jesus as somebody great <laughs> you see we'll appreciate him if we you know if he directly without the law if he brought jesus directly in there'll be no appreciation for first of all we won't even accept jesus we won't even go that route you see let me give you an example it's like this you know some people don't want to take advice you know they pretend like they know everything right who are you to tell me i know what i'm doing you know You, you can't go advise such can you go say my friend what you're doing is wrong they will you know tell you to get lost right i i know what i'm doing see until they come to the realization what they're doing is wrong it will not go well see until they come to that type of realization they can never take advice right when you tell them there is another way they will never follow it until they realize oh i have done a big mistake so like that god gives us the law and he says and he makes it very hard purposely purposely very difficult okay so that not because you'll suffer and he can laugh at it like a sadist you know some people think you know what is this god is giving it so hard making it so hard for me and then what is he laughing at me like while i'm failing to do these commandments no 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 he's making it so hard so that you'll realize very very quickly there is no way you can do this <laughs> and you'll run to him quickly and say god i can't do this what is this is there another and he will immediately he's not a sadist he wants you to realize very quickly but our people have not realized they failed to read their bibles properly they left out the all the commandments they have left out always they've le- conveniently right that's not god's fault 
says it very clearly. Paul knows it. Jesus knows it. James knows it. I already showed you. But anyway, the point is so that we will realize we cannot do, obey perfectly like God wants us to. See, God expects perfect obedience, my friend. God's standard is perfection, right? I've already spoken on all this. So God wants us to realize we can't do it on our own and then come to him. Why? Not because he's very proud. No, no, it's not like that. Then only we'll take his advice. Before that, if he comes and says, Jeevan, there is another way. It's an easy way. I'll say, no, no, never mind. I'll do it my own way. But when I do it and I find out I can't do it, then when he comes, Jeevan, there's an easy way, I'll go. See, here's Jesus, you know, believe in him. Everything is yours. All the blessing is yours if you simply believe in So that we will accept Jesus, he gives us the law. The law is supposed to bring us to, supposed to help us realize we can't do it on our own and help us to run to Jesus, right? This is the purpose of the law. So then, blessing does not come the hard way, right? Blessing does not come the, what is the hard way? Doing the commandments, right? Following the commandments, obeying perfectly. That is the hard way. Blessing comes only the easy way. Everybody say, easy. Easy. They're they're saying, give me something hard. Give Give me a lot of things to do. Make it difficult. I'm ready to do it. Easy. I can't believe in easy. Nothing happens easily, you know. If you, if you want to pass your exam easily, you can't go copy, right? Copy the other person from the other person, copy the answers. See, that's the easy way out in the world. You go copy the other person's answers, but if you get caught, that's all, you're finished, right? So it's better to go the hard way in the world, am I right? It's better to study hard, pass the exam very uh, honorably and fairly, right? Without copying. Let me give you another example, losing weight. Now, there are many ways to lose weight, they say. Some people are saying, if you take this tablet, you'll shed, you know, so many kilos. You take one tablet a day, you can do whatever you want, eat whatever you want, but kilos will just be going away. I don't know where it's going, but... (laughs) Some other people say, if you just put a band around your stomach and you stand in some machine and it'll just, you know, do... Just go back and forth like this and shake you up and uh, finally end up reducing your stomach will go down, it seems. I I don't know whether it's true. Uh, But I feel like all these easy ways have bad side effects. You know what I mean? You take the tablet, they say the weight is going, weight may go off, but something else will come. Some other disease will, stomach will go down with that machine, but some other part it will jut out, you know. (laughs) Point is, you know, all these easy ways don't seem to work out very well. The best way to lose weight is what? Diet and exercise. A combination of diet and exercise. And it seems to work. It's difficult, but it works, and there's no bad side effects, right? So in the world, we're accustomed to seeing that easy ways don't work out very well. And so when it comes to God also, we think the same way. Oh, it can't be that easy, God. I mean, come on. We're talking about God here. In the world, it's not easy. How can it be easy with God? It has to be hard. Tell me something hard I'm willing to believe. No, my friend, it's easy. With God, it is easy. It's the opposite of what we... God's ways are higher, different from our. See, God always just completely surprises us. You know, you would think he'd make it harder because he's God after all. But he makes it absolutely easy, so easy people can't even believe it. <laughs> and people don't even come to Christ. <laughs> Everything is so easy. You know, the Christian message says, come believe in Christ, you won't go to hell. I mean, that sounds like too good to be true, but that's true, right? Come believe in Christ, all your sins are forgiven. My goodness, that's too easy. Come believe in Christ. All your curses are also gone on the cross. Oh, that's even more unbelievable. I'm just going one more step and saying the basis for blessing is not your obedience. It is his. I'm not saying that much more, my friend. Everything in Christianity is unbelievable only. (laughs) And you're believing all that. You're believing in a heaven. You've never seen a heaven. You are believing in Jesus. Have you seen Jesus in the flesh? Everything you are believing is unbelievable. It's out of this world. If some, if you tell somebody, they'll be like, no, what do you mean, you know? Everything you're saying, it doesn't add up. But that's the whole beauty of it. It's too good to be true, yet it is true. This is Christianity. This is the gospel message. It's so easy, you can't believe it. <laughs> Everybody say easy. easy. Easy is the only way with God. To those who like it hard, let me say to you, Please don't do that with God, okay? It's not that there are two ways to blessing. One is the hard way. The hard way is you obey all the commandments and you struggle and then get blessed. And then I'm preaching the easy way. I'm saying, come, take the easy way. Why are you going the hard way? It's not like that. I'm saying, if you go the hard way, you will not get blessed. 
the hard way there it does not end in blessing in fact it ends in curse so there is only one way to blessing and it is the easy way everybody say easy you shouldn't forget that how was abram blessed easy he was not blessed like adam or noah the bible doesn't say you know no adam adam had to do a lot of work right had to do some work no also had to do some work god said you know go do these things fruitful multiply you go out and be fruitful multiply fill the earth subdue it and dominate it adam couldn't do it he gave him some work adam couldn't do it he brought curse into the world he brought curse into his own life you see so he gives another chance to noah think about these people adam is like that on top of the world you know before the fall adam's like you know the king of the world is given all the power and authority and everything and he can't do it okay then god comes to noah noah is the most righteous man on earth right at the time before the flood we read you go read genesis 6 9 i'm, I'm not going to read it noah is the most righteous man on the entire face of the earth and god picks him to show once again let's see how man does let's see how good man is right and noah fails the best man on earth fails now why did he do it twice i think if he had done it only once man might say tell him you know god you could have given us a second chance you know man is always very confident right be like confidence now confidence is very good don't get me wrong right but when it comes to god you got to be careful there's a limit right you can't be overconfident in your own confidence you see what i'm trying to say is i think god gave two chances adam and noah to prove that the best of men cannot do work and get blessing they cannot obey and get blessing they cannot keep just a few commandments he showed it and then comes abraham now god was waiting for abram all along from the very beginning he is abram's the guy okay he knows it god knows it abram's the guy through whom he's going to bless the whole world he's been he's just waiting for this time to come you know and think about abram he's so different from noah he's not the best of men right he's not the most righteous man on earth in fact he was not even following god he's a nobody from nowhere following other gods right he has no real qualification right but god purposely picks a man like that so opposite to adam and noah and the person has and abraham has no children he's old you know not even young no young blood people are saying young blood young blood well no abraham was an old man by the time god chose him so if you're old don't be too, too, too disappointed you know god can, god can do great things you know what i'm trying to say is he purposely proves the point that abraham is going to be blessed not by his obedience not by his works but by my grace i am going to do all the hard work abraham will receive blessing so easily right how does he tell abraham i will bless you go to the land i will show you i will make your name not you go out and make your name great i will make your name great i will make you a blessing i will bless those who bless you i will curse those who curse you who's doing all the work he will see will see to it that abraham is blessed my friend god will see to it that you are blessed if you can simply believe that i'm saying to you god will see to it that you are blessed this is the kind of god we serve you see these are his ways it's not that we are trying to see to it that we are going in the way of blessing no no god if you can believe that blessing is easy that it will come to you for free it will come very easily then god will see to it that you are blessed Amen. i say to people you know i i realize you are various people are in various difficult circumstances you may be hearing my words and you may be saying well this is all you know sky talk you know you're talking over there and i'm suffering in my problems well my friend if you can just take your eyes off the problem and listen to what i'm saying i'm saying to you blessing can come very easily your debt you can be delivered from your debt very easily you can be healed very easily that's what i'm saying you can come out of poverty very easily that is what i'm saying Pay attention i'm talking about how to get blessed very easily easy is the only way with god this is how abram got blessed this is how god wants every believer to get blessed not only blessing my other point last week was not only blessing but anything we receive from god is on this basis not on the basis of our works but on the basis of his grace alone through faith alone in christ alone to the glory of god alone 
Anything else, right? I gave you some examples. Salvation, forgiveness of sins, going to heaven. Right? That was my list. I don't want to go over that again. But the point is you receive all of those. Salvation, forgiveness of sins, going to heaven. You receive it free. You don't pay anything, right? Nor do you go out and do any good works to earn salvation or forgiveness of sins or even going to heaven. You get it free, right? Not even your good works. And you get it very easily, simply by putting your faith in Christ. Simply by believing that Christ did everything for you. Simply by believing Christ bore all your sins. Simply by believing Christ is able to keep you from falling until that day, right? Simply by believing that he's the author and the finisher of our... This is what Abraham did. See, he, didn't, he just believed in all the promises. God was telling him, I, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you that. And it all sounds unbelievable. And Abraham was like, okay, wow, great, you know, I'll believe it. <laughs> he said, I'm going to give you a child. Okay, I believe it. I'm going to give you land. Okay, I believe it. <laughs> I don't know how he got that, you know, sort of response to just believe, just blindly believe, just, you know, just readily believe. That's why Abraham's appreciated so much in the, New Testament, because he was ready to believe in the easy way, in the free way, right? And his faith, the Bible says, was counted to him as righteousness. That's all God wants from us, see? Show a little faith. He says, okay, I'll count it as righteousness. <laughs> Finished. People who went to Jesus to receive miracles simply believe that Jesus is good, Jesus is great, Jesus is powerful, he will do a miracle. They went, they received, they enjoyed, they left, see? That's all miracle receiving is. Very easy. Paul is saying it's free and it's easy. Re received by faith. Right? And uh, that is Paul's list. And then the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? Once again, Paul says, you don't receive the Holy Spirit because you went and obeyed the laws in the Old Testament. Uh, the, the laws in the Bible by your obedience. You don't receive the Holy Spirit because you did anything. Because you had the tarrying meeting. No, no. God wants to give you the Holy Spirit. He's more than eager to give you the Holy Spirit. He has made you righteous and qualified you to receive the Holy Spirit. He has done all the work. You see, you simply believe he wants to give you, you'll receive it. That's all. Paul's argument is that. So Paul is saying everything we receive is like this. It's free, it's easy, it's by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And then his list is not over. Okay, what we're doing is working our way backwards. Now I want you to want to take you to the next thing on the list, which is in Galatians 2:21. Let's read that verse. Galatians 2:21. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Now he brings in the idea of righteousness. He's been talking about blessing. He's been talking about miracles. He's been talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, righteousness. Right? Righteousness. The question is, how did righteousness come? Paul is saying, did it come through the law? In other words, by you doing the law, because you obeyed the law, righteousness came to you? Or did it come because Christ died for you? Right? That's what it says. Right? Righteousness. Now, righteousness is a very major issue in the book of Galatians. If you just go back a few verses, look at verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For, but for by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Now, you may say, I don't see the word righteousness there. Well, the word justified means to be made righteous or to be declared as righteous, right? To be made righteous. And many other languages will put it as to be declared righteous, right? So justified has to do with righteousness, okay? The, the justified just sounds confusing in English. But it's simply, in, in the Greek, it's just the verb form of, uh, you know, righteousness, right? Dikaio, sune is righteousness in Greek. Dikaio is to justify, right? It means the same, to make righteous is what it means to justify means to make righteous or to declare righteous well what is the meaning the meaning is basically something like this you see i have done everything right i have not sinned i've done all righteousness and so i can go before god and god looks at me and says you are righteous let's just suppose i have done everything right okay i've not sinned i've done everything only righteousness and i go before god and god looks at me and says jeevan you are 
righteous. That declaration only is justification, right? That is only being, that is being counted as righteous before God. Okay, that is the issue. What makes God to count you as righteous? What, on what basis does God consider you as righteous? Right? That is the issue. That is the issue in Galatians. Uh, you know, uh, the whole book of Galatians is about that. On what basis does God consider us to be right? Does God accept us as righteous? The option is two, op- two options. Is it on the basis of our works or is it on the basis of his grace? Is it on the basis of our obedience or is it on the basis of Christ's obedience? Is it on the basis of me doing something or him doing something, right? Is it on the basis of me going out and doing righteous works or is it on some other basis? That is the question. On what basis are we accepted by God as righteous? I went backwards and I'm putting it last in the list, but Paul actually puts it first because it's the most important thing. Because without righteousness, you cannot receive the spirit. Without righteousness, you cannot get blessing. There is a big connection between righteousness and everything else. Righteousness is sort of the foundation. It's sort of the reason. It's sort of the qualification to receive anything else from God. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart. 